Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at the Path of the Adventurers. Path of Adventurers is a game for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. The Path of Adventurers is a combat exploration game where you take on the role of one of five mighty adventurers moving through the land trying to squash the evil overlord and his minions. And along the way, you will be enhancing your hero with new weapons and new skills. Setup is really quick. Each player will choose a hero, one of the mighty five. They'll pick the miniature as well as their player board. Now on these player boards, you're gonna have your standard things you're looking for. You have your strength, dexterity, your intelligence and movement speed. Each of the characters have special abilities and you'll get two special ability cards to add to the hero to start, along with your starting equipment and the starting location, which you'll place all the heroes in the middle. You'll grab all the tokens and all the cards and put them next to the board. You've got various things here. Obviously, you have your health trackers, and for all the heroes, you have a number of tokens related to their stats. You'll grab those tokens and place them on their boards as well. Now, the neat, nice thing about these tokens is that they have a fatigue side, so you can flip them over dual usage. And then you have the dice, the critical dice. I love dice checkers, and this has a lot of that in this game. Other items worth of note, specifically the event cards. These are the cards that are going to lead you through the adventure, the narrative, so to say. And of course you have your encounter cards, you have enemy cards with their appropriate stats, and you've got items and legendary items to enhance your characters. And then you have your initiative track. Now, there's a lot here in this little box. There's a ton of adventure in this small box, so let's get to it. So as you explore this world, you will be randomly drawing location cards and placing them around the current location your heroes are in, if there's any unexplored edges. Now those cards are gonna have uh, basically rows and columns, and this is how you're gonna line up your heroes as you move into those locations for battle. And that's the key of this game. It is all about battling and getting more items and better skills. So you'll line them up appropriately, but just know that as you move through these locations, if you've already gone through a location and you've conquered it, then you can freely move through it. However, you have to stop and deal with locations as you move into them fresh. Now, each round of the game is divided into four phases. You have the event phase, you have the travel phase, which we kind of touched on already with the different locations, and you have the battle phase, kind of the core part of the game, really. And then you have the market phase where you can purchase new items. But for the event phase, what you're gonna do is pull the event card, and if there's one already in play, you will replace it, and those effects now become active for this round. Now, if it's the very first round of the game, you're going to skip this step. So then we move to the travel phase. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of these locations again, because you'll notice in the deck of locations that there are basically three of each type. Now, what that means is that you're going to encounter each of those areas three times, obviously, but it's three different levels of creatures that you will be encountering. So as you enter those and they get harder and harder, it definitely encourages you as a party, as a player, to grind it out a bit more because you're gonna have to build up your heroes in order to be more powerful and weather the oncoming storm. So as you move from location to location, again, you can only move through areas that you've already explored, but you move as a party. And when you move into an area, you have a couple different options. You have an exploration option or you have an assault option. The exploration allows you and your party to move to a location, line up properly however you want, and then draw that encounter card. And when you draw the encounter card, it will show what enemies are going to come into play. Now you have an option here as well. You can just battle it out or you can retreat. And if you do retreat, move back to the previous location, then a new round begins and you will pull a new event card. Your other option when you move into an area, like I said, is assault. You're still gonna pull that encounter card when you do this action, but this is like you're rushing the area 
and you're gonna basically get a surprise attack on the enemy. So you'll populate the enemy and you'll move right to combat. But really what this means is that you're going to move to the combat phase, but the enemy cannot respond in that first round of combat. But you will, as a party, you're gonna be receiving fatigue for doing this. And then we move to the battle phase. And this is really the heart of the game, like I said earlier. Now, there are, again, lanes or rows, columns for you to line up your particular heroes in and prepare for battle because it's very important based on melee and ranged how you have your characters aligned and when the enemies come into battle. And typically, really, the adventurers will line up on the side they came in from, but you'll still wanna jockey for position, so to say, and put your adventurers, you want your tanks up front and your ranged folks in the back, things like that. And then it's time to roll for initiative. Yes, you're gonna be setting up initiative order. Now, all the enemies have a pre-printed initiative on their cards and you'll place them below the heroes in the particular order that they call for. Now, the heroes though, don't have a set number. And what you're doing is you're looking at your dexterity dice, the blue markers on your card represent dexterity. So you'll take that number of dice and you'll roll it and you're looking for specific faces that you're going to add up to add them in the particular and correct initiative order on the initiative track. And then you have several combat actions you can perform. So the first one is movement. You might be in a part of the grid where you need to reposition yourself. And as long as there's free area, you can do that. Now, another reason would be that you might have to move to reposition yourself in order to target an enemy. This is targeting. So you can target either um, orthogonal or diagonal, it's up to you and how best to use the particular weapons you have in hand. Also, when you do move, you have to use one of your dexterity markers. You have to exhaust one of these, basically, in order to use that movement action. And then we move to the basic attack. And here you're gonna take a look at your item or weapon that you're using. And here we have the ax. At the bottom of this card, you'll notice that there are two sword icons. This is the difficulty level required in order to hit with this weapon. So you're going to go back to your character and look for your attributes here. So here we're looking for the red dice, obviously your strength. So you're gonna discard however many tokens you need to to roll that many dice. You're gonna roll the dice and you're looking for two swords in order to hit. If you hit, then you do the damage indicated at the bottom of the card. You'll take those markers and put them next to the enemy in the grid. So you also have special skills that you could tap into as well. Now, again, you can use as much attack as you want as long as you have attribute tokens to pay for what you're doing. In this case, we're using artillery and you have specific cost here as well. But just like with the basic attacks or anything you're doing, you can spend more tokens in order to increase your chance to hit that difficulty level the card calls for. Now, a lot of these special skills really are game changers as you engage in battle, but they do have fatigue associated with them, which will slow you down in subsequent rounds as you battle it out. Also, when you do damage with these special attacks, a lot of times you're gonna be hitting multiple enemies. So it's totally up to you how you distribute that damage. And of course, as enemies take damage, you check their card to see if they're completely killed off. If they are, they're removed from the board and enemies that were behind them will move up and start to flank the heroes and start to move in position. And then the enemies are going to attack. And so again, according to initiative order, we'll determine how all these attacks work. But the enemy's attack is just like the heroes. They're gonna be referencing the cards that they have, the stats that they have, and rolling dice appropriately. Now, you as the hero though, if you have attributes tokens, you can spend those tokens here as well in order to use dice to try to avoid and dodge those attacks. But any attacks that get through, you will calculate damage and put tokens on your character card. So yes, the heroes, when they hit zero, will be considered knocked out. Now, if all the heroes hit zero, that's the end of the game, you all lose. But while one hero is still standing, you have the potential to come back and you as the knocked out hero can't do anything until you regain one point back. Hopefully, one of your fellow heroes is there to help you out and bring you back to life. Now, you can also flee from the battle. And at the beginning of every round, you have to make this choice. 
So if you flee, you'll go back to the previous location and you escape. But if you all do that, that basically will reset the enemy for battling when you go back. Now at the end of each round of combat, while you're still engaged with the enemy, you're going to be recovering those attribute tokens that you spent the previous round. But you will have to discount the number of fatigue tokens you took in the previous round off that total amount. So you have a maximum of seven that you're gonna recover really. But if you have two fatigue tokens, then you gotta make choices about which types that you're going to have in play for that next round. And so the end of the battle happens when either you as the adventurers destroy all the enemies or they wipe you out and your names are forever remembered throughout the ages of history. But really the key is here, you want to destroy the enemies. And if you have, then each of the locations have legendary items that will show up indicated by the icon. And those items are super powerful and can be distributed among the party however you see fit. And they really are big, powerful weapons. But the other thing that happens is that you do recover half your health. Also, you're gonna get new skills. And so this is the way the game engages you in leveling up, so to say, as you expand your characters out. And then the last phase of every round is the market phase. And this is where you can buy new equipment and new items, things like that. You'll shuffle up the deck and deal out five cards. And the heroes can then choose to buy whatever they want. And then you start back at the top of the next round. And so you'll play round after round until you defeat one of the Dark Lords. And again, how that works is that you'll encounter these different locations and each of the locations will have three levels. So in the first level of that location, you have the basic enemies, and then the second level, you'll have to fight a lieutenant, and then the third level is all about fighting and defeating the Dark Lord. But remember again, that you don't wanna just jump to that because you really do have to grind it out a bit and level up these characters. And if you defeat the Dark Lord, then the heroes will be forever remembered. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, I am pretty impressed with how much adventure and game is in this small box. It is a very light dungeon crawly type adventure, but it is also a dice checker, which is right at my sweet spot for type of games that I enjoy. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.